Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving game masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! You know, on paper, I should have liked everything about this movie. I, I like the person directing. I liked most of the actors that I saw. And it bothers me more that I can't put my finger on why I don't like this movie. Okay, so how did the movie... Uh, two, two questions. How did the movie bother you? Well, I did, off, I, what I did, movie are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about Inglorious Bastards. Okay, and who are we again? Uh, it's Inglorious <laughs> Dogs, I think. It's, <laughs> uh, hi, welcome to Have Movies Will Game. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we are back after an extended it's, break with our Taren, the winner of our Tarantino. You guys work. can't see this because yeah. we don't do video, but this is a nice studio yeah we yeah. We, we we got moved it's into a finished, new studio yeah. there's no rafters no <laughs> it's not like overly cold either for my bald head there's a window there's, there's multiple two. windows yeah yeah and i haven't hung up any of the paneling yet because i've still got a few more things to put in place but even even in its even in its raw glory the, 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 the disarray yeah, yeah. The, the actual padded <laughs> carpet is killing a lot of the yeah already anyway it feels um, nice i mean it, it's spacey. we have a it's studio open. yeah it, it feels good um, so yes, this, Inglorious this, Bastards. This, this movie, I don't know why I didn't like it. Okay, so for those of you who have not seen Inglorious Bastards, this is a Tarantino movie that is set up in Nazi-occupied France during World War II, and the plan to assassinate Nazi leaders by a group of Jewish U.S. soldiers coincides. Sounds brilliant. With a th- with a theater owner's vengeful plans for the same. She was great. Alternate history movie. Yeah, yeah. Th- alternate I think history. That yeah. might be where my disconnect was. But here, here's the thing. I don't have that with Indiana Jones. Well, Indiana Jones is kind of a side story. You yeah. can take it out. And it's you could insert it into that, that, history that, that, and it doesn't you know what, really that, change that's anything. That's true because yeah. it, it, didn't, it didn't wrap up the Nazi problem. Yeah. No, it just it, it took that, that uh, item of the occult and took it out of you know, Hitler's hands. That's all that Indiana Jones did or those yep. items. So, yeah, this is a full on changing of history yeah which i i seem to recall you saying at one point you liked the alternate history i do novels. this one this one bothered me though it's not like sm sterling you know or uh dies the fire or anything like that this was i honestly here's the thing i think it's it's important for what happened in world war ii to be remembered and remembered correctly and i i think like this I think maybe my disconnect was I felt that this movie could have damaged that. Too many people turn to like this kind of media to get their information. Like how much do you know about World War II that you didn't see from Band of Brothers or something like that or or movies? How, how much do you it, it, know? It's a good point, but I, I think Band of Brothers, because it is its own separate thing and it's amazing, it, it leads you, that show leads you down the path of, Oh, hey, they're talking about this, and this is real, and I want to go out and find out more about this. Would you like to know more? Yeah. Whereas this, it's very obvious that this is alternate because Hitler dies know, in the spoiler, Hitler dies in the theater with <laughs> his entire entourage. And like everybody. We, we know that Goebbels, this, is, Goering. this is the end. Or, I mean, or just spoiler in general, yeah. Hitler dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when you go to Which, see don't Titanic. Get me wrong, I'm not against Hitler being gunned the, down in his the His death scene was glorious. It was oh, yeah. such satisfaction. It was so comical, like the bits of bullet taking off yeah. chunks of the head. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of things I did like about this movie, like the, the scene at the beginning, that long, slow build. I mean, uh, where he's he's questioning the farmer. Mm-hmm. That was that was brilliant. No, that was like well no done. No music there. It was just. It I, was just, I love stuff like that. that. And there was a couple pan. moments like that in the film. I think it might have been Brad Pitt. Uh, he was one of my favorites. Really? Uh, I loved oh, his character. I hated. His I was accent. laughing so really? hard. Yeah, that didn't. Oh, I thought it was great. So I, I'm not from Tennessee, <laughs> but the moon they, it, it just it sounded wrong. Well, I happened to. I think he also had a problem with his throat because he had been slit open. Yeah, 
which they never go into an explanation. And Tarantino said he would never explain it. And even in the script, it says he he has a scar. Maybe this happened. Maybe that happened. But Tarantino said that I'm doesn't never... change your accent, though. That changes your timber. <laughs> that, that, agree, doesn't, that doesn't make but, you sound oh, I'm from Tennessee no I'm from New York I mean you, that I doesn't that. Have I don't know you I, I, I gotta say as a southerner he sounded perfect to me did he he sound that sounded like a northern know, Alabama slash Tennessee accent to me I don't know that's I where I grew up Tennessee we joked that Tennessee was not a state it was just an extraterritorial extension of Mississippi and Alabama and uh, the, the Tennessee accent to me is indistinguishable from Northern Alabama. He hammed it up a little bit, but his cadence, the the way he kind of chewed when he talked a little bit, like like, like that line I, at the honestly, end. Honestly, I thought it was softer. That line at the end where he's the German is like, "Oh, you're going to get court martialed for this," and it's like more like chewed out. I've, I've been chewed out. I've, I've been chewed out before. <laughs> I was like, "This is perfect." <laughs> <laughs> to me, that was perfect. Uh, you know, like I said, I can't put my finger on why I didn't like this movie. And it, it really bothers me because all, all the right ingredients were there for Matthew to like this movie. Well, it, it is it somewhat. It does surprise me. That I, I am surprised somewhat myself. Somewhat based on a true story. Quotes in the air. Somewhat based on a true story. Loosely. <laughs> loosely. <laughs> Very loosely. Uh, it, it, although it is and fictional. Maybe, it maybe was, because there weren't any heroes except well, Marcel. It was really? inspired by Operation Green Up, which was a real life mission by the Office of Strategic Services uh, in 1945. So there was a, f- a few, apparently there were three agents that uh, were very much like some of the movie, like some of the characters in the movie, and they pretty much did everything that was done, but it just wasn't as glorified, and they didn't burn down a the theater. So. so Dusty, I'm pretty sure you did, but Matthew, did you catch the voice of the OSS commander on the phone at the end of the movie? Yes, I no. did. Uh, it was the wolf from Pulp Fiction. It was Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, that, you hear that voice and you're like, oh, yep. No. Well, just like Samuel L. Jackson is the narrator, but you yeah. never see Samuel yeah. L. Jackson. That, that I got, yeah. but that's Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure I heard Quentin Tarantino's voice in the uh, Birth of a Nation, was whatever it was scalped. called. Yeah, he got scalped. He was one of the extras I, I, that I got scalped. Him, yeah. nice. So with the scalping, they actually took scalping classes. They There was a thing that, that Tarantino set up so they could so it would look authentic. So there'd be real scalping. And and Tarantino said, listen, whoever has the best scalping at the end of this like week (laughs) practice (laughs) gets to be on film, like with a close up showing of you scalping, you know, these these heads that we've had made in the makeup department. One of which is me. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, and that's where you get one of the at the end with where you see um, uh, the I think it was the bear Jew where he's scalping the guy at the end. No, the bear Jew was killed he, oh, he yeah, blew he up was killed. Yeah. yeah yeah that's right yeah, it was the, the, um, the little man little man yeah little man yeah. who is the guy from the office yeah. yes yeah. that's okay. the yeah yeah okay yeah all right <laughs> yeah the, the the connections to reality are tenuous at best <laughs> <laughs> the initial project uh tarantino had first conceived the idea was going to have sylvester stallone as aldo rain and then Bruce Willis as Donnie Donowitz and Schwarzenegger as still get still glitz. Uh, so we see just like it's taking a shit old. when he came up with that, because that's a well, terrible that was, idea. That was when he started. Now yeah. the, the movie, the movie started, you know, it was be, um, prior to kill bill was when he started writing this, like right around Pulp Fiction apparently was when he was starting to write this. He had the ideas, but they just didn't come to fruition. And then, it was mostly because he didn't know how to end it. And then the script kept getting larger and larger and larger. And at one point dialogue wise, it was almost four hours long. And he's like, I can't do that. I have to cut it. Uh, By the way, did we watch the long one? I wa- I have the special edition Blu-ray. Did, did, whichever one it is was, on Plex. I think it's yeah, two it hours, like 30 two minutes. and a half yeah. hours. Yeah. 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 I watched it on fast forward. <laughs> why for most of the because i'd seen it before okay. and i remember yeah, i hadn't there so are certain scenes in thing. it to me that were just too long like what? and like, well like, first off that conversation at the beginning i've experienced it before and i appreciate it but i was in a time crunch and it's like okay. 30 minutes because i was i was gonna say as, as <laughs> i someone loved who's a everything fan with of, hans lava he was, was great he was amazing as someone who's a fan of like sergio leone that you like the long you know, for I a few dollars more that and up, everything, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really kind of surprised that you're like, okay, next scene, I gotta, next I gotta, scene. 
I gotta admit something. Mm-hmm. If I watch a Sergio Leone movie. I watch it in 1.3 speed. Really? If not 1.5 speed. Oh, what does scenes. Clint Eastwood sound like in that? <laughs> no, their voices aren't changed. They're just sped up a little bit, but it, it preserves the pitch it, on the media player. VLC? That I use. Are you using uh, VLC it's for called, It is called Pot Player. It is uh, much better than VLC. Oh, well, yeah. check it out. The, the, All right. I, yeah. I really it wish is. that that You have the didn't... option. You can turn on the yeah. pitch speed up, or you can leave it just sort of choppy. Anyway, you feel lucky. Well, yeah. This what? episode brought to you by Pop Player. So, as a side note, <laughs> as a side note, I must say that when I edit these episodes, I listen to the whole thing. From I, I remember you saying that, but I put it on like one point five speed or up to two point speed, and everybody sounds like a chipmunk, and it's hilarious. Huh. I have the option to preserve, but it's just not. Why as would fun. you? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so other another four, scene. Four hours. Okay. Another scene. <laughs> yeah. Another scene that I would fast forward that I fast forwarded through. Was when he was just choking her out when he killed. Oh, the real choking! I was just like, okay, this no, no, I no, oh, this is just torture porn. So I got to move forward. Tarantino uh, torture porn works for me. I'm just said that he was not sure oh, that was if, a large if round of be, indifference. <laughs> if it was going to be like the like the person who was going to be doing that would be either get it right, you know, go too much or go too little. So he so he said, you know what. I'm going to choke you. I'm going to choke you into about you about the point of where you pass out. We're going to see how it looks. And she almost did completely pass out and she got it in one take. So Tarantino kind of likes to push his actors a little bit much. There's a, there's a story I read about with Kill Bill Two, the scene where Uma Thurman's in the car, he was goading her to go faster and go faster and go faster. And she wrecked the car. Like, she got hurt really bad during that. And he, like, to this day, still feels bad about that. Is that the the pussy wagon? No, it was the convertible when she was going to find... Uh, Art's dangerous, otherwise it's not worth doing. (laughs) Nobody wants your safe corporate art. I admit, (laughs) I do wish Kill Bill had won the vote. I'm glad it didn't. Such Such a good movie. I would have much rather done that than this. Okay, so (sighs) Kill Bill Volume 1 is... a. It's a good movie. I like that one. Volume two. It's a stylistic fucking masterpiece is what it is. I agree. I agree. But volume two is just pure shite. Okay. Get the hell out of my house. <laughs> I mean, even if it is, I mean, we, we did Conan. Well, you did Conan. You didn't do Conan the Destroyer. So it doesn't matter. No, I understand that. I, you know, if, if we were to do that, I would have mined it just like I mine everything else. And I would have. Had my I didn't like this and I didn't like that. I like them both. I think I'm they're both great movies. War talks didn't win. <laughs> yeah, or Foxy Brown. It has some good scenes. Jackie Brown. It. Jackie Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, completely different. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> anyway, back to yeah. Glorious Bastards. So when Tarantino <laughs> approached, uh, and there's a number of people that were all, that were associated with a, a lot of the, a lot of the parts, when Tarantino approached Brad Pitt. He actually met with him at uh, in France where Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, Jolie lived uh, and talked about him playing the part of Aldo Rain. Apparently over five bottles of wine, his own stock of wine called Pink Floyd Rosé, and then he accepted the, the role finally. <laughs> Pink Floyd Rosé. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> but initially, Tarantino sought out Leonardo wait, DiCaprio. Wait, 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 wait. It's really important for me to know whose wine that was. That was Brad Pitt's. Now, apparently, Brad Pitt has his own he, five <sighs> bottles of the estate's own Pink Floyd Rose when he accepted the role. I say I love Brad Pitt as an actor. So do I. I he's, think he's great. Fantastic. Uh, him and Keanu yeah. Reeves are in my top, probably yeah. top seven. Well, the thing I like about Pitt over Reeves is that Pitt is versatile. He, he can play just about any character. And you don't look at him and think that until you see him doing it. You know how this this show we do changed me? I'm actually looking forward to John Wick 3. Good. I, I wasn't into it before you guys made me do the John Wicks. <laughs> I was like, Keanu Reeves, is, he's not great. I know we're going off track. It's whatever. <laughs> but stop, stop looking at it. We're only 13 and a half. We're fine. <laughs> but... I, I, I'm actually really excited. This has made me grow. Now, I think you're both nuts by saying, you know, that's the top eight or whatever, but. Yeah, Keanu's well. not in my top eight. Okay. He's in my, yeah. my, mine. I, no, like I, think, I think Keanu, like. I will say he is actually yeah. an actor now, though. And I didn't think that before. Yeah. I think okay. he's, I think it's good, but I'm not going to drop anything to go see a Keanu movie. Yeah. You're missing out. He's a good actor. Good movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know. Um, who, did, who is the one that's playing Hans Lada? That would be Waltz. 
I don't know him. The German, the Jew hunter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He was also. I, in... I just think of him oh. as the detective. I oh, mean, well, well. I mean, that's. Otherwise, that... we're going to get some fans for this. You may not want. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, no, no. I don't use that as a slur. I use that because that was his title in the movie. He says yeah. that several times. That like. I've been given, I, I'm not my title, but I've been called the Jew hunter, just like you've been called little man. And that guy right. like freaks out. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm the little guy. I'm the little man. No. And he's like, I thought you would be taller given your name. So I'm not using it as a slur. I thought he was amazing. He won like he, a he bajillion was, award. Yeah, good. Because yeah. he was the best part of that movie. Yes. I and think Tarantino then, said he, that, that um, Walt gave me my movie end quote. Because he feared that the part was going to be unplayable, and he gave it to him. Oh yeah, yeah. He won an he won an Oscar for it, a Good. BAFTA. He won he won two Oscars uh, for two different Tarantino movies. One for his role here in Inglorious Bastards, and then in his role in Django Unchained. That scene where he was telling about the name, he was telling the guy his name was Little Man. That entire conversation, they kept cutting back and forth between Lunda and the two guys, mm -hmm. and they were both sitting there tied up. And the uh, the little man, his expression did not change that whole time. He just had That's this that intense, actor's gig too, and he he held that expression. Whereas the contrast between him and Pitt, Pitt's sitting there, kind of open his mouth like he's going to say something, and almost oh, like he's hilarious, like he's chewing the air and he's yeah reacting. It was it was a real nice contrast mm -hmm. to look to the left, look to the right, look to the left, look to the right. Yeah, he's like a rat dog. He just focuses in. He's like. Argh. Tarantino also asked Adam Sandler fuck to play the role of Donnie Donowitz. Thank but Sandler God, no. declined it due to schedule conflicts with the film Funny People. That was like e the best thing that happened in this Eli movie. Eli Roth was cast in the role instead, obviously. Roth was great. Uh, yeah. They only, like all of them only had a few lines though. But they were prominent. I mean, obviously they were prominent throughout the whole movie. So yeah, I mean, Adam Sandler could stand yeah. there. That's fine. Sorry, my favorite of the bastards was Stiglitz. Stiglitz was great. The, well, the thing that makes, to me, uh, made him, even just him playing this character is because he is German. Uh, he says he said in interviews that every time he was presented with a movie about World War II, he refused to take the part because he did not want to be in a Nazi uniform. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. But when he read Tarantino's movie, he would decide to take it because he would be killing Nazis at that point, even Nazis. though he had the... The, the yeah, Nazi Nazis. uniform on briefly. <laughs> Nazis. Uh, Simon Pegg was also attached to this movie. Ooh. Okay, that could have been good. Yeah. Uh, as uh, uh, Highcox, but was forced to drop out due to scheduling with uh, Spielberg's Tintin adaption. So Lieutenant Archie Highcox. Which one was that? That, that was, was the Brit, right? That was Myers' part. Who yeah. ultimately Mike went to Myers. Mike Myers. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That whole scene with the Brits, I think, was probably the most comically wonderful moment of the whole movie just the the way that the brits are like hmm, yeah yeah oh yeah so i go back and forth at each other mm -hmm. the, the the political the conversation between them i only have my scotch a certain way God. so fassbender actually started <laughs> negotiations uh to take to take high Cox as well uh, to to take um sorry uh landa but tarantino when when fassbender said i want to play landa tarantino said Anybody that thinks that they can play Landa can't play Landa, so fuck off. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Fassbender is pretty good. I really liked him as the uh, villain of the Prometheus movie. Ah, okay. I was but, like, he's not a villain in this movie. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah I, I right, can't yeah. see him as Landa. No. The funny thing is with Fassbender, he, his first language is German. He was raised in, I think, Ireland, if I remember correctly. So the bit about his accent being weird when they're in the bar, that was that was them poking fun at his actual accent because he, even though he does speak German predominantly, he's got an accent because there's a little bit of Irish in there as well. I did like that scene too. That was a very good everyone's scene. Everyone's pointing. It was very long. At each other's testicles. And he does, <laughs> and he does say that a lot, the biggest thing that people come up to him. Not like, hey, I remember you in this movie. I like you in this movie. Just from across the way, they'll just do the three fingers. Like from oh, across right. the street, they'll go three. <laughs> Honestly, it makes sense. Why do we do that? Like it, it, it should be one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Counting Why? from your thumb instead of thumb isn't there. One, two, three. I remember growing up, all to dad was always one. Just, just like he was in Germany for a while. So 
and our family's German, so apparently it, it is just a thing. makes sense. Or or that way, you, as long I, as it I starts don't, from I don't an like, end. Though, I don't right? like going from pinky to to ring finger to. Well, because then you finger. go one, two, three, four. <laughs> I mean, it just it doesn't. So it's I, not I, equal. You know, this would be a lot more sensical if there was video. So yeah, probably. Just not- <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. I just. It, it still isn't sitting right with me. And it's weird because there, there are moments that I admired a great deal and I thought were amazing. It was just overall, there's, I wish I could figure out what it was. The cinematography, great. The music, a couple off moments where the music got a bit more modern than it should have been. Yeah, that was odd. Um, the cinematography was great. I uh-huh. had a reason for that. The, the, the guy that did the cinematography, Robert Richardson, he also did The Hateful Eight. He did both Kill Bill movies, version of volumes. The Aviator. Uh, with uh, DiCaprio, Casino oh, yeah. with uh, Pesci and and De Niro. I'm really proud of the ones he's listing off. Are you? <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. A few good men, JFK, The Doors with Val Kilmer, Eight Men Out, which is a really if you haven't seen Eight Men Out, it's a really good movie. It's slow, but it's a great movie. Wall Street and then Platoon. So he's got a really good. Yeah, he's resume. got chops. Uh, he knows what he's doing with the camera. So there's a good reason job. why good it job, looks dude. so good. As for the music. Did what? I, yeah, I don't know why it, it happened that way a couple of times. Because that's just Tarantino doing yeah. with things, taking music from prior eras and playing into modern day, and then vice versa. Which I no. I kind of like. I, I like the anachronism with it. It's it's, it's good. The, actually, the reverse of an anachronism. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, thank you for correcting me. Fuck off. Um, why? why, why? <laughs> that that would be the that would be him driving. Uh, Star Trek, where he drives a motorcycle to ACDC. That's an anachronism because it's from the past. That was also like oh, no, disjointing no. and horrible. No, uh, an- anachronism. <laughs> oh, you mean the sixty-three? Sorry. Anachronisms Star Trek are completely reversible. Switch. If you play something like, for for example, the movie Knight's Tale, which mm-hmm. is nothing but like modern oh, music, oh, oh, oh. yes, yeah. that is considered an anachronism. Or if somebody were wearing a digital watch in a Knight's Tale, that would be considered an anachronism. No, that happened in Glory. Yeah. Well, in Glory, wait, yeah. that can't yeah. be right. Yeah, I'm gonna look this up. It's, after. it's reversible. <laughs> okay, I. I gotta say, I loved this movie, but I'm in an odd state where I don't have that much to say about it. Really? Like, I, it I've was a good like movie. Five you, you can pages go, man. Of notes. I'll, I'll just, I thought we were. I thought it was going to be like uh, uh, John Wick, where we were going to like wax philosophical and dive in and eat a lot of the meat off the bone you know, on this and but sound there, there a barbaric lot off of, with this. There wasn't a lot of meat to eat off the bone. I mean, it was all it was all wrapped up. There wasn't anything left to go. And I mean, they, they took a very, I'm sorry, they, they took a very modern approach to a problem, which they didn't at the time, which I thought also took me out of the moment where it's like, yeah, we have this moment. We're going to kill it. And they don't go, well, by the rights of war, we're not going to do this. They just go, oh, okay, take them out, which is not what would have happened. I think it was a technical masterpiece. Agreed. But, but it, there's not that much meat there. Yeah, yeah, it was Tarantino I, doing I, his. I don't see how death. you guys don't see. There's a lot of meat when you've got you uh, like most Tarantino movies. You've got different stories that are co- that are going to converge at, 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 at the at the point in the you know at the climax, and they have the the singular story that they ultimately go towards. And it it is a story about revenge, and it is a story about redemption, and it is a story. It is a deep story. I don't see how you guys don't see this. I see it. I just it wasn't just. It, maybe it was just the way it was told. Honestly, I, I I see what you're saying. It was probably for you. It was Pitt because he yeah. added a comicness to it that, like, I could have yeah. taken the hard bitten Southerner. Yeah, yeah. But him being silly with it. Yeah, the silliness. See like him that, being you, silly. Yeah. You know, I saw him being a smartass, but I didn't see him being. silly. You know where we go into the alignment later. Yeah, like his attitude as he played that changed his alignment from what you'd expect the American hero to be. Like, Pitt's got problems, man. Well, he's st- yeah. He started out as I mean, his character does change from from the opening sequence of and I want my head. Nazi scalps to the I very want my end. Scalps. It's where he takes his scalp. And- he he knows that everything he did is now in vain. So fuck it. I, I'm gonna do what I do, and I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be the American soldier that I've been trained and bred to be. Now I'm I'm gonna be a mercenary. I don't feel the depth that you feel. That's okay. Dusty. I enjoyed it. I don't have the same complaints that Matthew does. I just thought it was a fucking hilarious, fun. The movie. weird thing is, is that I'm going to watch this again so I can figure out where the fuck it went wrong. Yeah, I, because now, now it just 
bothers me. There were, were also a lot of, of, of technical things that went on that uh, the swastika that that broke at the end where it was on the steel cables. Mm-hmm. The fire got so hot. Uh, they had they did a bunch of testing and the and the flames didn't get any more than like 400 degrees. And then when they were filming, something messed. Somebody screwed up with the with the fire system. The flames were over 1200 degrees during filming. A couple people almost got burned really badly. But the scene where the the swastika or the eagle breaks, yeah, yeah. It's that, a swastika. That, that was a mistake. That that was a screw up because it, the the steel cables melted. It wasn't supposed to break down like that. So it was really kind of neat to look at. It felt. I, I will say this for our purposes. It was good. It, it felt like an adventuring party. Yeah, no, your absolutely. first like, yeah. plan goes wrong because somebody else is doing the thing, and oh, not just that. And like most of your party gets wiped out in yeah. a bar fight. Yeah, but wait, but, but, I mean, but, it, but, it felt like an adventuring but party. We're also, <laughs> you guys are just focusing on Aldo Rain's storyline. You guys aren't even wanting to talk about like Shoshana and everything that she was going on. and like. Is her, Shoshana her, the kid? She's the, yeah. the the girl that uh, ends up uh, opening. Carrière la, la petite. Yeah, that owns the the theater. That that it, that's it's her. No, I, I know who she is. I'm saying it was she the one who fled yeah, from yeah. the yes. scene at the beginning. Yeah, okay. where he called her name out. Yeah, I think she or, was great, and I think the actress was amazing. Yeah. That scene where she's being pandered you know to what? You're and talked right. to. It is him. It's fucking yeah. Brad Pitt. Okay, yeah. that's that's what it is. Because I, I I liked everything else until they got to. Another scene with the inglorious bastard scalping people. Okay, or, or every or, other part of this was a good movie, a really good movie. So you, so you didn't like any of the scene where they were at the sewers, where they bring out the bat with the bear Jew, no. and, and they. I'm really disappointed. Like that's, seriously, that, that's not how America makes war. I didn't like that. It was a disconnect. I, I, that, I that's that's not our gig. I agree with you on on the level. That's not how we're supposed to. But there's also that the not we're not supposed to is a thin veneer that the, the, the that that kind of like is seen. But there's that underside of what really goes on. There's but he was things sanctioned that go on in this movie. He yeah, was and sanctioned, I think, and I, I think, think that's where my disconnect is. Still do the things or or enlisted men still do the things that they don't want to do. I mean, my granddad even you know was very much like we we had a job to do. I don't have this. <sighs> this suns and roses view of the military and no. i'm i am quite convinced that many of our people out there do things like this if not worse and possibly even sanctioned um but i do think that uh i i get where matthew's coming from here oh, so do that i i'm not it, arguing it's that it's the comical it is the comical portrayal of all of this in the midst of an otherwise really serious story what to me that represents is the, the GM has sat down and has this great story about, you know, loss and revenge. And, and it, the party in, kills in the quest War. giver. Exactly. <laughs> and then he's like, and I'm going to run this with my with my group. And they're a bunch of dick bags. And they make characters that want to scalp Nazis. And, well, see, I, I look and he's at like, that. God damn it. What did I do? I look at that. If you want to look at that. Yeah, that's on, that's on actually a, a really good point. If you want to look at that on, on a character development part, like for a party member, I look at that as okay. This person sat down and and wrote this character out and decided the the background trait or the flaw that my character has is PTSD, and that and that is the motivation for what everything that Aldo does is he has severe PTSD and he does the horrible things he does in this movie, joking it, joking with it to deal with his PTSD. I don't think Pitt portrays that. No, I don't know. Okay, that that's that's yeah. how I, I see think it. he's okay. crazy. Has drank too much fucking <laughs> old granddad and he's like i'm an apache warrior I'm like, yeah, he's okay. whole, like, <laughs> but but aside from aldo there's there's more to the to the movie there's shoshana there's 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 the detective agreed you know? and i like all of that it is you're right it's brad pitt it, okay. it's it's and it may not be that it may just be how it was written it, it may not brad pitt's a great actor but that that's my disconnect okay no that's fair i mean i had a disconnect with fucking night breed and you know <laughs> you were like it's the greatest movie ever and <laughs> no I, I never said anything I, I like that. he said he loved it <laughs> <laughs> but you know i and and i and i and i love you for that but it's just for me i'm just like i, I, I don't know why you're looking at me i loved this movie oh uh, no no, <laughs> okay. no i was talking about night breed so okay. <laughs> so I mean, you so so you didn't like it really because of Brad. I mean, you liked everything except the Brad. So if you were to if you were to watch an edit of Brad Pitt taken out of the movie, I would call it 
a theater owner's revenge, and it would have nothing to do with inglorious bastards or nobleborn or proper sons. Yeah, it honestly, was, it was there was extraneous to the story. Yeah, their whole presence and everything was extraneous to the story. I like the idea of a yeah. military operation wanting to go down and trying to go down, but local partisans take care of the problem all by In themselves. In fact, you could have removed just the American unit from it. Yeah. Focused entirely on the Brit, the Germans, and the French, and it would have been a better story. I agree. Yeah. It would have been a deeper story. I, don't, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I, mean I would I assume you're not waiting it. for the troops to ride into the rescue. That would have been a story about revolution and rebellion and human yeah. spirit instead of <laughs> we're gonna scalp you <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fair I, I i can see that all right all right i'll, I'll concede to that one that, that was well well that was a good accent thanks we're scalp you oh that was almost that, that that was going back that was heralding back to your kevin costner uh impression i scalped 10 of the furious <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> that sack of shit <laughs> hope he gets ass cancer <laughs> the original working title for this movie was once upon a time in nazi occupied france better title too which he actually put as the first chapter for the for the you know for the movie but uh the inglorious bastards title was a nod to another movie that was made uh by another director that was his friend but he did it was spelled differently the bastards spelling he said in an interview that's just how bastard sounds so he wanted to keep it erds and the inglorious with the extra I, U. I noticed that, yeah. The the glorious inglorious with the extra U. Tarantino said he would never explain it. That when you make an artistic statement and that kind of flow, it you would give everything away. He's pompous. He would give bit, everything yeah. away that gives that that piece of artistry. The movie actually had a budget of seventy million dollars. Opening weekend, it made thirty eight. So it really was kind of a flop opening weekend. Gross Still USA made 120 million. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, and then the why did that cost so much? There's like four sets. A lot of it went to Germany because you cannot have uh, German reg- Nazi regalia out. You you have to pay an extra edition. If you price. film in Germany, they did. Oh well, that was dumb. <laughs> all of the actors they played Germans were German, mm-hmm. and all of the Frenchmen were French. I think they. I and think he m- was like hardcore with. All the nationalities and ethnicities. Yep. And uh, uh, Waltz can speak German, French, uh, Italian, kind of. And he overdubbed all of his parts for... Wait, Ger- Germany gets to charge extra? Yeah. They remember who Germany was, right? No, and that's why it's, it's illegal. Not like, now, it's not like now, we did that. And they're like, oh, oh, no, you don't get to do that. They No, they don't <laughs> want it out in the public. There's a big reason. Now, they can't... If it's for a movie, they, they kind of like... they they. The posters couldn't have the Nazi swastika on it. They couldn't have anything to do with World War II, but the movie itself could have the flags and everything, but they did have to pay a price. Production companies have to pay because it puts it up. Like when Valkyrie was done with Tom Cruise, they had to get very specific special permission to have everything up for X amount of time, and then they had to take it down and put it in a storeroom. They, they're, I understand. They're trying to forget. They're like, yeah, we know we fucked up, guys. Let's not. Let's just try and keep this under the rug. I get that. Best of luck. Well, they're also America likes to dig this up every three or four years. America does, but (laughs) Germany wants to put a squash on any like Mm neo-Nazi groups that rise up, and that's part of the laws around that. They're like, this will we never want this to happen again. And in order to do it, we're not going to let you display this. You are not allowed to worship that dark stain on our past. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Then worldwide, it made three hundred twenty-one million dollars. Yeah, it's a success. It's a Quentin Tarantino Tarantino movie. Tarantino calls it his. Uh, his biggest to date movie. Everything else is kind of under this movie. There really wasn't that many sets. No, there wasn't. I think that the last line of the movie Tarantino put in there as a statement. The last thing is when Brad Pitt carves that, and it's this gory, brutal yeah. carving into the forehead, and the two are looking over and they're laughing, and he says, "I think this might be well, may well be my masterpiece." And then the movie cuts and it out. Cuts black. I'm pretty sure that was Tarantino jerking off right there. Oh, I'm sure it was. Yep. He kind of jerks off to every movie he pretty does. much. <laughs> I do I, like the message of the film. Don't be a Nazi. Or <laughs> <laughs> don't take off the uniform, buddy. Because if you <laughs> if you take off that particular thing and you know you I get did, carved, I, I like did that a lot. like that line. Yeah, like, you're gonna take that off. Yeah, and you knew right then and there. Oh, you're going for that again. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a, I mean, that was a, that was a good callback yeah. earlier in the movie. Uh-huh. It was. Yeah. It was like, oh, here's yeah. Fact, that You're was the only time I liked his up there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. We we can move on to the other part unless you got something else. I just uh, it it, it was it was Brad Pitt. I'm glad okay. I, I'm glad I identified it. I, I thank you. You got to admit though, he did he did have a couple good lines. One of them about oh, being absolutely. about chewed out. Nah, I've been chewed out before. And, and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't his fault. He didn't write that character. Okay, you know? so I have a question for you. Was it the accent that you had a problem with, or was it the character itself? Like I if don't... he if he would have been New York City, like Bronx, you know, World War II Bronx style voice and oh, cadence. let's go fuck up some nazis out here no that's not would that, would, would, that, would, would, that would, would that have been fine with you or was it no no Pitt because and the character i i don't mind the the regional mm-hmm. i just i it was wrong there was just it, it graded and it was wrong okay i get it i yeah. get it i liked the character and i again i, I would I have mixed watch, feelings on it i yeah. would watch a show about him mm-hmm. huh? yeah as long as you cut all the rest of the story out Okay, so you would want this to be two completely different movies. It Either should have been two you completely have all different of, movies. You have all That's of the Glorious Bastards, yeah. and then you have another movie of all of Shoshana and her. Yeah. Okay, I, that, I can that see that. I could see, because that, man, it just, they didn't I, belong I could, together. I could see two movies being done and that, you know, you hit very much like uh, Kill Bill, and then having them run parallel to each other. I, I can see that. that. That could work. I could see that. I think the movie should have ended with Shoshana. Should have ended the same way it began it should have ended with her revenge yeah that should have been the last and that thing was a that good movie. revenge we that, that, say that right was the yeah. was the burning still of the plane yes. in the smoke yeah after the screen is gone well yes and, and you can still see it in the smoke and yeah. you can still hear the soundtrack and, and marcel yeah well the funny thing yeah. about that is a lot of people just, in like, interviews asked him why why did you have her record her speech in english and there was the reason for that actually is because most of the germans that were in that room couldn't speak English, so it made it even more pronounced like a big fuck you because you don't understand English. So even though I'm telling you that you're going to die, you have no idea that you're going to die. Yeah. And I like that. I like I little cold ass shit to say to someone right before you kill him. It was pretty good. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I do think it should have ended with her. I think that if they were... I think that it was... was so set on the two parallel stories, she should have ended it. And I think that would have created a more impactful film or yeah or two movies like uh kill bill one kill yeah, bill two yeah where you also the next one is this undercover unit operating behind lines in nazi germany coming up and failing to do it and cleaning up the aftermath oh my god yeah if the first movie ends and all of a sudden these dude these two dudes just pop up with bombs and walking and everything yeah. and you're like who are these guys and it does a second movie and then it then it like tells their story that would have been rad. Tarantino, you missed an opportunity it's there. It's okay. It was it was still good. I yeah. just there there was a disconnect. And okay. I was I was just ah, there's something wrong here. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, that's nice for you to tell Quentin Tarantino that. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> telling you. It's nice for you to be wrong every once in a while. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm not wrong, Dustin. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, so on that note, <laughs> do you have anything else for us before we no, switch over? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, let's take this to the gaming table. Okay. Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games. All right, Dusty, let's talk about these characters. Who we got? I kind of like that Leonardo DiCaprio was the first thought to play Aldo Rain instead of Brad Pitt. I know we, we've we kind of just gotten off this tangent of, of Brad Pitt and not like, but I, I do think DiCaprio would have been a would would have been a good choice for this. I think if you're doing a guy from Tennessee, you need Billy Bob Thornton. All right, so we have <laughs> Brad Pitt as Lieutenant Aldo Rain. Everybody knows movies that Brad Pitt's been in. Good, fine, great. We're moving on from that. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about some of the movies he's been in that we don't. Well, no, know. wait, 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 wait. What's what's the most 
obscure the obscure Brad Pitt movie you can think. No, 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 don't, no, don't. No, no, oh, the, the most obscure you can think Brad of. Pitt movie that I can think of. And if you say Legends of the Fall, I'm gonna fucking no, stab you. Obscure. Okay, <laughs> that's not obscure. Thelma and Louise. He was a relatively. Vi- that was one of his first roles. Uh, where he, I suppose, like, yeah, it would be like that, that was or, back when they were just trying to set with him a up vampire. Or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was before yeah. Interview the Vampire, but yeah. for by a yeah. few years, so he wasn't he yeah. wasn't huge at, anywhere near. I, a lot of people, sorry, I did it. It's this is my fault. No, 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 no it's <laughs> fine. No, no, one of one of my favorite movies of his is actually Twelve Monkeys. I was just about to fucking say the Thank same you. thing. Yes. Yes. I yes. love that movie. That was the first time that I realized Brad Pitt could act. Yeah, it's a it. He does a great movie. Mm-hmm. He does a great crazy person. You know, I was just thinking back to Interview with a Vampire. I'm like, that's the first movie I thought Tom Cruise could act in. Uh, I'm gonna go with Chaotic Neutral. Yeah, he was, he was not a good. good. He was not a good person. But Mike. I think that's from the PTSD, and we've already. I agree. I he was he was borderline evil. I would be interested to see how the scene, the aftermath of the bar, would have played out had the actress not shot. Wilhelm was that his name? Wilhelm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If the actress had not shot him, I wonder if Pitt would have honored if, if that character Aldo would have honored the arrangement. I think he would have. Then they would have let him go. The yeah, German. Yeah. Oh, okay. He would have been scarred, but yeah, he would have let him go. Okay. Huh. Okay. Poor right. Max. So uh, Melanie Laurent as Shoshana, uh, also chaotic neutral. Yeah, I don't really get a she sense of good, good or evil yeah. out of her. I just get a sense of a desire for revenge. Yeah. And definitely she was a yeah. bit chaotic in her actions. And well, I, no. I, I, I will say that she, like, this wasn't a flaw in her character. She was absolutely driven to that alignment. Oh, yeah. It's so tough. I she would never almost, had a chance because she ran as a kid, you know? I almost put her as neutral because I don't think she's very chaotic. She formulates a very step-by-step calculated plan. She's fighting the Nazis. Mm-hmm. So clearly she's working for working against the enemy of her people. Um, it's, it's tough for me. It, it's I'll, hard. Yeah. 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 That's tough. Christoph Waltz oh. as Colonel Hans. Lawful Landa. fucking evil. I was going to go for lawful neutral. He's, he's not, he's doing it because he was hired to persecute him. He, I, I was wondering, I was wondering where, how this was going to go with that one. Cause I, I can see both of that. his whole speech at the beginning about not hating yeah. the rat. He doesn't know? hate the rat. But he also betrays his own people the, the moment end. an opportunity arises and he sees well, it and it's a good opportunity. And then he's like, oh, and then he goes through all of this. But then he does ask for medals of honor for the rest of the fucking bastard. So that's weird. But well, still, he, know, he yeah. knows he's going to he, he knows there's nowhere for him to go. So why not yeah. try to cut a deal? That's true. But the fact that he betrays his his he betrays his rank. He betrays everything about the, the side that he's fighting for. That or don't see as neutral. I think that's that's evil. Okay, so well, I'm I, just I, glad you didn't say he was yeah. evil because he was a Nazi in this particular one. <laughs> because no, 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 because you're going off of what his action were towards his own people, right or wrong. Yeah, so I'm you're, going you're using it within his own environment. It's which less I like. about who he's working for and how, but more about how he works for them. Yeah, yeah, that's usually how I do it. I'm glad you're joining me. I mean, I don't think that any of his acts ever were good. I mean. Straight up, just going through the murdering beginning. people. I don't, I wouldn't see that as good at but the I, very I, beginning. The one that that oh, really he sets lets the tone. her go. He lets her go. But was that good or was it just fucking bored? Did he just decide? We'll yeah. see where this goes. After after I, I think it was. We'll see where this goes because yeah. there's the scene where she's you know she's sitting she's brought in by the 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 actor and they're sitting there and I think he knows who that is and he's fucking with her. And there's a psychological game that's being played at yeah. that dinner table where he's asking for milk, the the, yeah. the milk, and then the whole thing about the the strudel because at that point in time, strudel was made with pork fat, and I think he yeah. knew that that was Shoshana. Lever, and he was fucking with her because like try the strudel. Oh, I know who you are. Buy the milk, like you just yeah. said. The strudel, you have to eat it. Try it and put more cream on it. Get him. It was a psychological warfare Get him. with him. Yeah. Not cream. Get him. Um, I'm going with lawful neutral. I, I can see the argument for lawful evil. I just, I, I think there were moments where he's he, like, he, he wasn't, he didn't feel to me, God, this is all going to sound wrong. So I'm just not going to say it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And then we had Sergeant Donnie Donowitz, the Jew bear played by Eli Roth. No, I'm, I'm not yeah. doing the inglorious bastards. I they really, all had two lines each. I want to eh. give him more. 
But they didn't but he's get got a much. high billing. He does. So? You have to have more than two lines. Yeah, that's it's kind of like an okay, think of it this way. If we were to do Scream, mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore is the highest billing on that movie. Yeah. She's in the movie for five minutes at the beginning and yeah. killed off. Yeah. We wouldn't give her an alignment because she has no character. All right. All right. Now the bear Jew has a character. All of the bastards technically do, but we see so little of them. In fact, of the bastards. It's almost as if they weren't required for the movie to be good. Of the actual bastards, the only ones that we see like actual portrayal of interest in what they're doing, I think, the bear Jew seems to take, you know, I would Stiglitz. give him some chaos. Stiglitz. I'm talking about the Jews specifically. Okay. I would give the bear Jews at least some level of chaos for his that whole bat thing at the beginning. But the smaller guy, uh, not, not little man, yeah. but there was a smaller guy in it. Who the guy who shot the first German? They had the two Germans, mm-hmm. and they're about to pull one up, and he just shot one of them. Well, and they're Stiglitz, like, yeah, that no was... one Stiglitz. It was there, and they're like, God damn it! Like horror was it? I forget the character. Well, he name. really made such a good impression on us that we yeah. all remember who he is. <laughs> he was he just definitely a tiny... deserves an alignment. No, no, no. He was a tiny little dude, and I remember, you know, I don't remember the character's name. Yeah, but that and the guy at the end, little man. So those three, I think, are the only okay. three that. And even then, I couldn't give him an alignment other than chaotic something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then we'll go with uh, Diane Kruger, who played Bridget von Hammersmark. She was chaotic good, in my opinion. She was uh, doing a double agent thing. Yeah, I'll yeah. give her that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. All right. Uh, one of the few good alignments I'm willing to toss out in this movie. So, Dusty, what have we seen her in? We have seen Diane Kruger in Friday the 13th. Kr- uh, oh. Freddy's right. <laughs> I would like for you to pronounce these movies, Dusty. National <laughs> Treasure. Oh, okay. She oh. was in National Treasure. Uh, she was also in, and that's really about it of anything big. Okay, but a lot of German movies, right? Yeah, she yeah, has yeah. been a lot of German movies. And part of the thing with her was that Tarantino didn't think that she'd be able to pull off the German aspect, the German character, and then she sat there and did her lines in German and he's like, yep, okay, you can do this. You've got the yeah. part. But he went through three different rounds with her. She actually had to sit in and do lines from Reservoir Dogs. And that was a, and, and that's what she did like in German. And that was one of the things that got her the part. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Then we have Jackie Ito. I, was, I almost didn't know how to pronounce his name. Who played Marcel. I liked Marcel. Marcel was chaotic good as well. Yeah. Now, yeah. you can be chaotic good. And be in love with Chaotic Neutral. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. So I think that his part was. I think his part was fucking beautiful. I think it was beautiful. And I think it, it was, was tragic. I, was, I think it was depressingly small. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to know a little bit more about him. Yeah. If we could have cleared you know? out all those bastards out of the way, we could have <laughs> learned more about him. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have uh, Dennis Menoche, who played the father, Shoshana's father in the beginning. Well, what was his name? His name was. Wait, that Pierre wasn't La- La- that wasn't Not, her father. No, he was the one that, that was, was really close. Not I'm, bad. I'm better with French than Japanese. And- <laughs> yeah, not bad, man. Thank yeah, you. He wasn't you. the father. He was no, just he the was guy just, housing the family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he was the one that spoke to... Well, he was. He had three to, daughters there. Too, to so. Waltz's character that they slipped into in the beginning when they slipped into English. Which, that, honestly, that was a great that transition. That was gorgeous. Yeah, it really was. That whole scene was gorgeous. And knowing that the family below the floorboards couldn't understand English. I liked his regret, too. Like, he he really wanted to save them. Yeah. And he broke. And, yeah. like, he almost got a lawful good out of me. But he did get a chaotic good. Lawful good would have died. Yeah. Oh, okay. Again, hardcore pilot and lawful good would have died. You can You can be lawful good and still break to torture. That is just a form of mental torture yeah. right there. I mean, lawful good with a low willpower. He failed his will check. Yeah. He mm-hmm. made a saving throw versus the the guy and that doesn't it. work well, like that failed, anymore. He, he had disadvantage. No, <laughs> I, I think no, I think he he failed the intimidation check. Yeah, it was intimidation that, check. Yeah. I mean he had no, he had what there were there were there were six or seven enlisted German soldiers that were yeah. outside with, with guns. Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of guns, you would you will like this, Matthew, because I know you're a big you're a big fan of guns. Um, they had to go through additional training because uh, no one touched an American-made gun in this movie. So the whole idea was the bastards, they would collect the guns off the people that they that they killed. So even during filming, there were no American guns used. Yeah. So, sorry, tangent. That's true. 
you were saying. Was I? I think I am. Chaotic good is what I was going with. He was, yes. I, I thought he was almost lawful good, but I don't think. Up until, I, the, I, up until the moment he broke, I, he I, was. I, I, no, I, I, think, I think he would have figured something else out. Again, alignment, <laughs> alignment is a guideline. It's not no, I, a, I, I a hard and fast rule. Okay, but what would he have figured out? There, there were like five to seven German soldiers outside, all with rifles. So... It, 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 even even if he yeah, could, even if he were all, to kill they were all at the cars even if he were to, to kill Walt they were all at the cars I think there were two at the door just even the if he were to kill Walt by whatever means because he was a, he is a big French guy they're still going to be there and just plow through everything and they will they're... go through the house and then find them regardless and then he dies Doesn't... so he does he does die a honorable death at that point he, yeah but no, and I and which, I, I, which I, I one's get that. better. It, and it doesn't matter how big you are. No, I know. Mental intimidation is a real thing. Yeah. Like, he rolled really well on his intimidation roll. Well, he, he, it's almost as if his character was tricked out to do just that well, and nothing was, else. Even on the intimidation level, like, the, the whole... Can, Min Max know, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing about smoking with the pipe where where the, the, the farmer pulls out the small cob pipe and, you know, then comes out this huge Mission, nod yeah. to Sherlock Holmes pipe. And it's just, you know, look at my pipe. It's bigger. It's better. And basically, here's my cock. And it's bigger. And then they both sat around, lit their cocks on fire, and sucked them. (laughs) It it, it doesn't have to be a dick, man. It it can just be a pipe. You know that, right? Uh, Yeah, I know that. Who who, who we got next? No, wait. I want to know why you think it's a dick. So moving on. Yeah. (laughs) No, (laughs) goddammit. That's it for characters. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Who are we missing? Frederick Zoller, the German movie star. Yeah, uh, I, uh, oh, you're right. He only had. Like, I would. He was, he was only okay, like if, if the third biggest say character the, in the, the movie. bastards. <laughs> are NPCs? He's an NPC. He Why? Is a, he didn't do anything. Really? He didn't. He didn't I have a think... pursuit of the what I consider the main character. Okay, so what about the bastards then? Because two he had, lines. He had dude. just as much. Oh, I forgot. Time. That's a penis thing. You see, two lines is equal to. No. 50 lines. No, yeah, no. Zoller was probably the third or fourth biggest yeah. character in the whole movie. I see. I yeah. I don't see that. I he did not have anywhere near the amount of impact that the like any of the bastards did. He killed the heroine. <laughs> no, I understand that, but he did not have there. The story was oh, he's an actor. Okay, he's an actor that was like he fucking. It was a propagandist actor. He didn't have anything. He was a soldier. Is he what didn't he have was. Anything he only killed three hundred people. In my, in my it's, opinion, it's he didn't have yeah, anything like, to go with the story. When did you kill? Like I don't know. Dusty can roll three hundred twenties. Apparently, on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, I honestly thought he was he was a character. Honestly, I think he had more character portrayal than most of the bastards as well yeah. because he's clearly suffering. Not just lines, but he's also got some PTSD happening yeah. there. Mm. He's having a difficult time watching his own movie. Because he's reliving an experience that he might not actually have liked all that Whoa, much. Did we watch two different mo- movies at that point? Because there's a part where he's like smiling and laughing. I don't know, at, but like, you won't. Thing, you, like with him shooting out the clock tower. Wait, I, I, I want to. That's a movie. That yeah, was I, I understand him that. portraying a character in the movie, but he's yeah. sitting in the theater visibly discomforted by no, no, watching. No, even it. his character was smiling and laughing. Okay. The character of no, Zoller no, I, at the theater I, mm-hmm. watching the movie was, was disturbed, very disturbed by it to the point that he's like, I can't, I have to leave. I can't watch okay. this anymore. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And we may have watched two different movies. Maybe. You didn't watch the Plex <laughs> yeah. one, did you? You said that earlier. No, right? I have it on Blu-ray. I have okay, a special so edition on Blu-ray. Yeah. And we he didn't was, watch okay. the same movie. Now his portrayal on the screen in the movie where he played the, same yeah. act, the, the character, he was clearly you know acting. But it, it's also, clear Brad that, Pitt doesn't yeah. actually take scalps. Just I, so you I, know, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I I felt that he had some interesting character growth and some yeah. depth. Uh, but I think he ruined any sympathy ruined I it. had for yeah. him at the end in that projection booth yep. when he forced his way on, on, in on her. You know? That was the moment I was like, okay, he might do something. In- no. No. Nope. Oh, Here I no. thought he was. See, I don't think he had any growth because from the moment that he comes onto the screen, he's he's infatuated with the woman and he's doing everything he can to basically you know, just to get her. And then at the end, there's there's no resolution for the character. He He barges in on her and then he kills her. There's no growth there. I feel like we watched a different movie. I, I think we I did. I think too. we did. Yeah. yeah. I would give him an alignment. Yeah. And I would say. I'm going um, with Lawful Evil. I think he he's he is the villain. I would probably say Lawful Neutral. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's an evil act there at the end. That, that's Fucking, a straight evil well, act. Well, so does scalping people. That's an <laughs> yeah. evil act. Yeah. 
burning a theater full of people alive. Yeah, That's but they're evil Nazis. <laughs> wait, 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 no, that's not what I said. Okay, so you know you said they're not evil because they're Nazis or something along those anyway. lines. No, no, no. I said that in <laughs> in the context of of their society is how you have to judge what their alignment is. No, no. You did say earlier, don't say that they're evil because they're Nazis. And now you're like, oh, but they're Nazis. We can kill them. <laughs> well, you can always kill Nazis. They're fucking Nazis. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not defending Nazis. I'm just. You're, it kind of sounds con- like it. you contradicted yourself. That's this, all, this is- dude. I am a. I am a. I am a man, not a program, and I can contradict <laughs> myself anytime I goddamn want to. My I know. programming allows. It. I know. I just like. I can see that 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 Zoller was n- not a character, like not a well-rounded, growthful character. I, I vehemently disagree. I, I, okay, no, I, that's fine. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, I felt that he had a lot of, of subtle growth. And I did think he, yeah. he, that was an evil act at the end, which is why I tagged evil on them. I will say lawful, though. Yeah, I mean, it's following the laws I, of this I, I country. I could see the neutral. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say neutral evil. Mm-mm. No, no, lawful neutral. Oh, like yeah, what you put yeah. out. I put out lawful evil. Somewhere in there, again, it's only nine alignments. Yeah. There's gray areas in between them that <sighs> fucking D&D. So what game you got on this one? Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Where's <laughs> this going mad. next? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ways this could go. You can't honestly do any more in World War II in Germany because Hitler's is dead. <laughs> Goebbels, Goebbels is dead. Goering's dead. Um, the, just the whole lead apparatus of the Third Reich is dead. So you either have to uh, run down and play the, uh, with the Desert Fox in North Africa or you can um like like here's what happens if germany folds in 1941 mind you mm-hmm. before america enters the war that was 1943 41 i'm pretty sure they said 43 i th- could have swore it was 41 no, it was 43 i think it was 43 oh okay well they were already does, talking about landing at normandy does japan attack well we, they are not mentioned at all in this movie yeah so i mean like are are we still fighting a war in this in the Pacific? I don't remember. I'm so not, that yeah. that that would matter for this, but that's that's that would be where I think they would be sent next to try and. Pu- well, if it was forty three, the then yeah, we 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 would have been Japan yeah, would have attacked us. Yeah, it was forty one. It uh, was forty one. Yeah, December seventh, nineteen forty one. Uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked, and so we would have been in the Pacific at this point. And if it was set in forty three. So D-Day would have been being talked about. It would have been being planned, and but not yet into effect. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So this changes a lot. I mean, so here, here's, here's <laughs> what you can do. You have these guys who are, are crazy guys who ended the war because scalps, right? Mm-hmm. Ter- 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 terror tactics, right? Yeah. Nancy. So what? Yeah. Guerrilla warfare. Nancy's. So they, they would probably get sent to the, the Pacific uh, to all the, uh, the, the hell spots of the uh, Pacific campaign. Oh my God. And oh for my that, God. just watch the Pacific. Have you read the stories of the Japanese soldiers, which whittled down to one soldier on some Pacific Island that was fighting world war two for about 40 years after it was over. Or yeah. There was an archer episode on it. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it was a fascinating story. It that just came out on Facebook, too. Like like they literally had to get Japanese command to go down there yeah. and relieve him of his duty. Yeah, because he was still fighting. Mm-hmm. He was still fighting. What if they send the bastards out there? Yeah. They're like, oh, we got all these islands where these crazy gorillas are fighting. You know what? Let's get some gorillas versus some gorillas. Yeah. I, I, I think if, if it's Japan in this alternate universe that he built, then yes. But honestly, I mean, I think Japan would fold because 1943. They don't. They don't have the backing. They don't have the Which Germany. means Russia pivots and goes straight to Japan. <laughs> then the axis is over. That, what that's if Russia fun. just dis- okay? Now we're doing some alternate history. What if here? But what if Russia decides at this point? Well, okay, we're taking Germany completely. Well, so then they move in, and then the tides change. 
The war continues when Russia Why, why realizes... do you think we didn't like Russia? Oh, that's no. exactly what they tried no, to no. do. No, <laughs> no, but the Cold War was a very real thing, and I'm very yeah. familiar with a lot of how that went down. But let's, let's, let's take this alternate history further here. Hitler and all of his people are dead. Yes. So Stalin's like, opportunity. Y'all aren't here yet. I'm taking all of this. And he moves in. And then it becomes one of these games of Axis and Allies where one of the Allies switches, and you're like, you fucker. <laughs> I, I could see a Russian yeah. campaign. The um, Russian campaign, I think, would be the easiest. Either that or, or Italy. Is Mussolini still a thing at this point? Or yet? <sighs> Mussolini was a thing at this point. Yeah. Um, what was interesting is I was looking at the map that Hitler had on the wall, and I noticed they had swastikas over Italy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mussolini declared early. All right. I thought he... I thought he was an ally, but not. I would also uh, want to okay. see a much later one, like 10 years later, where they are hauled out and sent to Korea. <laughs> that would be interesting. Oh, man. Oh, and then they have to go meet up with the MASH crew. Yeah, because <laughs> because here's the thing. The MASH crew is they are allied with the Koreans. <laughs> they help them. So I had this great mental image of Brad Pitt standing in front of Alan Alda. Oh my God! His handful of his hair and his knife in his other. Oh my God! Um, that, that's all I had, though. I'm sorry. I don't. I want to play that game. <laughs> or it's that so sounds... horrible. Glug glug glug. Oh, you like horrible, dude. <laughs> oh man. Okay, then let's. Before we conversely, though, um, okay. you you could also do um, marked Germans running from. Mm -hmm. uh, from the hunters these are not one thing i picked up from him is that this was personal this wasn't a soldier executing his orders like scalping never been in order um so it's not inconceivable that after the war they are going to chase down all those men they marked yeah and, and i was gonna say style. what you could also take it down into south america the, Assuming they end up there, yeah. Yeah, some of the the Nazis that that went down into Argentina and yeah, and you South were talking America. about that on the episode of uh, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. well, well, the, the boys from about Brazil, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Starship Troopers. Yes, yeah, yeah, Buenos yeah. Aires, mm -hmm. yeah. Buenos Aires. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the 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 Nazis that left Germany after the war found refuge in South America, and uh, they stayed there. And uh, there are reports that there are still a couple that are unaccounted for that could still be alive in that area. Yeah, makes um, sense. So Not for could, long anymore, though. Yeah, like five more years, and that's all taken care yeah. of one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> so you could do uh, you could do a session where it's okay. Well, we've you know we've heard reports from from the Nuremberg trials and that people, some didn't weren't brought into justice yeah. and they were living in South America. So, well, here's the so thing: they get though, sent like, down to that area. Yeah. It's definitely a hunting campaign. I would like to see the Korea War, but that's more of a comedy. But this movie tried to do comedy, and I'm, I'm just I'm torn on my game as much as I was torn on this movie. Well, see, I don't I don't know if I don't know if the, the if Aldo and and the rest of 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 those that that that, that got out that survived World War II. I I think come 13 years late because it was what 1955 I yeah. think was the Korean War. So 13 years later off of the, after uh, after World War II, I don't think they're going to want to put their boots back on and go and but you go have, fight. You have Aldo versus Alda. <laughs> <laughs> so I think perfect. the next thing would be like 6 months a year later they get they get called back in and it would be going to South America uh because there was This were, depends th though on what Japan does. True, but if they do the South America group because there was there's always been the rumors of the the Nazi subs going into the harbors, uh, some of the harbors down there, you know, under the cover of night, pulling out pulling out gold from the subs and artwork and fighting and, Indiana and, Jones, and, and and like taking over areas and trying to rebuild the Third Reich only from South America. Have any of you seen the movie Dodd Snow? Das Das Boot. Dodd Snow. Mm. Dead Snow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that Nazi movie. zombies yes. and Nazi gold up yeah. in like fucking Sweden or yes, something. Yes, and it was yeah. cursed. Yes. So, yeah, we could totally do something like that. Yeah, okay. It has to be with the stupid bastard, so everyone else is dead. Just not Korea. Well, okay, I'm, first I'm, fine off, with, I'm fine with continuing just not in Korea personally. Okay. okay, before we start talking about the games, I want to talk about the game themes that we're going to draw from this movie. And we need to decide, mm -hmm. are we going to go for the serious there, there's side two. there's two exactly for there's, the dramatic there, there's resistance yep 
against a foreign invader. Uh huh. And then there's let's play soldiers. <laughs> let's play vigilantes. Yeah. Essentially, I I, yeah. I think at this point, or or you could go with it that they they are they are done with their military service. They've been given their 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 pension or whatever. They're done and they're out. And then Aldo. It gets some get stuck up in his craw that some of the Nazis got away. So he gets he gets his crew back together and they go hunt Nazis. I thought his crew consists of one dude at this point. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, and he's, so they, so they get mean, new people. They get new people and go hunt Nazis in yeah. South America. But he recruits brutal people off the books, so. way off the books. But they but the the those in command who are now trying to to put you know, post World War II set up back together. Do they get a they, van with a letter on the side? Yes, they know <laughs> that it's him because there are reports coming out that there are people with the, with the squastikas scarred into their head. And what's that letter? It's an D. A <laughs> because he's Alda. <laughs> It's bastards. It's well. Now we're making the eight. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, that's fucking that savage. That wraps world. that. <laughs> gun Dude, and you right know, that's, there. that's what I thought too. There's this great expansion, uh, a World War II expansion. The Weird yeah. War. Yeah. 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 For Savage Worlds. Uh-huh. And we do Savage Worlds a lot. We so do. I was looking at other things. I like, I'll go back to one of my favorites is D20 Modern because they do have a Nazi They pulp, do. Yeah. Which I think is really good, but also goes in line with like the whole Hollow Earth thing, which. You could take that into there also. Well, if you wanted to run investigation style, presuming, of course, that we're going to make this game based on the name of the movie, which is The Bastards, yeah. Yeah. and kind of forget about all the serious stuff that really didn't fit mm-hmm. that theme. If we're going to focus on the group and what they're doing, then we could either go action, we could go tragedy, comedy. Or we could also go investigation. We could mix some of that in. And there's a, the Call of Cthulhu uh, expansion setting, Delta Green, I, I which think, would work very well for that. You'd mm-hmm. have to strip out a lot of the supernatural stuff. But, but you could still do it. I think, I think action and investigate, because I think it's going to need that action pop that like every third page, there's a fight, you know, and you're reading. The those, part that really got me from this novels. movie yeah. is uh, yeah. was the cat and mouse between the investigator the uh the detective the jew hunter and um and the the people he was talking to i think that was the part of the movie that i thought had the biggest theme that so, can easily if you want to yeah. if you want a system that does mechanics I, I based on that investigating an investigation based game such as any of the robin laws has the uh oh shit the gumshoe system could mm-hmm. work for this i there might even be one based in GURPS has a World War II one that's pretty yeah. decent. What I like about the gumshoe system is it's built around investigation at the core. So it has mechanics based around the distribution of clues and understanding and the awareness of plots. It's pretty cool. However, if we want to go with something that's like these that that Lee has a system that leads to these crazy ass fights where half the party is dead in one round, Savage Worlds can do that. Yeah. You just want to make sure that all of the Honestly, most of the uh, bastards in the mm-hmm. movie were expendable. They were straight oh, yeah. up expendable. They were in Savage Worlds. They'd be extras. Yeah, they would not have wild dice. They would exist as tokens. Yeah, that the p- guy playing Alda would flick off for so he didn't take a wound. <laughs> yeah, well, right. <laughs> Morowitz is dead. Nope. <laughs> like. <laughs> It was really one dude with a squad of what might have well been yeah. nameless people. Yeah. So really, if you think about it that way, but you could play this as a non-party role-playing game. That's where the player fun, character. Though. Well, it, it was an option. It is an option where you play a game where the player characters of the game are Alda, whose thing is I have a gang. You have uh, what's the, his name? The, the German. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bad guy. Where he's playing, and his thing is oh shit! What really game? Good. What game did Apocalypse we do? Apocalypse World. Yeah, yeah, would do this very well. Yeah. Then you because have because they're they're not they're not a party. They're three people working towards a story. Yeah. And, and then, then you have the shop the 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 owner of the theater. Theater. Yeah. She's doing her thing. The Brit. That would be actually no, pretty cool. No, just those three. I can't think of anybody else. I think the Brit's just a side character. Yeah. Someone else that he flicks another token that the gang. Guy flicks off. Oh my god! Apocalypse World would do this very well. It actually, would. Yeah, I will go if you're doing a traditional. Though you guys, you're in a party and you want to be the inglorious bastards, and you're more bringing them mm-hmm. up as player characters. I go with Dusty's T20 Modern. 
definitely. That would be the way to go with that. For each of you taking a theme of the movie and running that of the three different movies that were mm-hmm. shoehorned into one movie, <laughs> I would say what you just said. Where you are yeah. all three sitting at the table, either playing with or against each other, yeah. depending yeah. upon how your early, the moment goes. Oh my god, that'd be wonderful. I'd actually that would be a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. <laughs> that would. Of course, uh, most of those are dead now. So what? Well, you, you can, yeah, you can't play that at the end. Well, no, no, no. That's the <laughs> to play the next one. The, if we're yeah. gonna play the next one, the next one, then he just gets a new gag. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still there. The woman's not there. We have, we still have the Nazis. That's two. I think we'd build a whole new group of characters. You, you'd need. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like, uh, maybe there's a uh, an Argentinian investigator. Yeah. And they're like, we're here to get Nazis, and he's like, there's no Nazis in my country, but he's secretly thinks one of them Nazis. yeah or yeah. one or is just one of them oh yeah he spends the entire game helping them but also hindering them yeah because, because he wants to yep. bring them into his government yeah yeah okay yeah that that would work so i would go There's so uh, many ways you could take party this. system dusty's way uh definitely because i've we've brought up modern and we never go with it yeah we, we've and brought i up like a few. modern it's one of my favorites yeah. um but if you want to play the themes then definitely yeah, yeah. If we want to stick with everything in the movie and not just the bastards, I would do the apocalypse world thing. Mm-hmm. If we want to just stick with the group, we could do D20 modern. Personally, I do Savage Worlds, but but it's only because I know it better. I think it moves quicker. I get yeah. that. Yeah. No, yeah. Savage Worlds, it does move very fast. I like yeah. that. That's the one of the thing. I mean, there's a lot I like about mm-hmm. Savage Worlds, but I do really like that it moves really fast. Uh, I just also, I did a lot of, of, teeth sharpening with uh, modern d20 you could also do dungeon crawl classics yes, you could you really could uh what a, what about half the party wh- dies at once what about what about gurps world war ii yeah you could do well okay here's what yeah, I, would, I know because i know you said weird gurps war, is weird odd war. i could never recommend gurps as a simply because it's so generically boring however their source books are amazing okay what about <laughs> Uh, TSR's top secret. Not for this. No, you don't no. think so? No. Atomic Blonde, yes. This, that, this, that, this is more this of a is, spy oriented. Well, this yeah. this kind of turns into a spy thing at the same time, doesn't it? Because they, if you're going to do the whole art going down to Argentina, you're being quiet about it. You're I trying think to... it's 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 more of a covert. It is okay. a covert op, but it's it's a military covert op, not, yeah. a, not a cultural or diplomatic covert off. yeah okay. yeah, right. yeah yeah i was just throwing that out there seeing if it was no I, I see what you're saying and like if you if this was a bond movie or anything mm, like that yeah. I'd say, fuck yeah you're fuck entirely yeah. correct yeah I, I can see top secret being what you would pick up if you just wanted to be like we are actually covert agents mm-hmm. fuck the bastards or okay. if or yeah. if you were just doing um the argentinian trying to find the nazis yeah. that would be the way to do it yeah there was a movie that was here out last year that had um uh oscar isaacs uh in it that that he he was part of the uh israeli task force that would find uh it had uh to find the uh nazis that went down to argentina so that would work for that i forget the name of the movie we'll look that up later and put it in yeah Yeah. all right right. well i think we got it don't we i think so good to be back do we uh do we give an actual winner or are we going to go with the two depending on how you want to play i think because of the nature of the movie i Mm -hmm. think it's a split because Again, because it's two goddamn stories, movies. It's yeah. essentially two goddamn movies. So we'll go with either D20 Modern or Apocalypse World, depending upon yeah. how you want to do that it. That works for me. You know? So how many how many bastards would you give this? Out, of, out, 10, of, out of 10? How many bastards were there? It shouldn't be 10. There weren't uh, 10 bastards. I think there were the eight, right? I think there were eight, yeah. Sure, whatever. Yeah, I would eight. give this six out of eight bastards. Um, I would give it seven. I I'd give really it seven. I enjoyed it, yeah. but it wasn't perfect. Yeah, seven. Okay. I think that if it had been split in two movies, I then would it, give it it each of them been, eight out yeah. of eight. Volume one, yeah. volume two. Yeah. A good running. I, I would have done it. Yeah. Okay. Because, guys, I know I was fumbling for it at the beginning, and but now it makes sense. Yeah. It, it should have been two movies. Yep. That's what it was. Well, coming up next, we've got a Pixar set. Yeah. Uh, by the time <laughs> this launches, it's going to be voting. And if you want to vote twice, you should join our Patreon campaign. It is still there, even after our break. I promise. <laughs> Patrons get to vote both on the private Patreon poll, <laughs> and they also get to vote on the website. 
I thought it looked bad because like I got my pizza and then we're gone from. <laughs> I got what that's I all, That's all we've done. That's we've, we've forty episodes lined up just to get you your pizza and then we tap out. Oh we're yeah, done. gone. We later. We're sitting here rubbing <laughs> our mitts together. We spent X amount of money getting the board oh and getting God. all the equipment. All of that for just shitty for pizza. A pizza. A six dollar pizza. Hey, little Caesar's yeah. pizza. <laughs> little Caesar's. If you're looking to sponsor a podcast, please Fuck, let us. Yeah, let us yeah, yeah no talk to me, baby. It was good. It was good pizza. Yeah, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't. It, it has gotten better. It, well, yeah, they they've stepped up their game, and I think a lot of it. That is extra dollar, <laughs> that's where it all went. It's not a. a it sure it's didn't not go a, to employee wages. It's that's not a sure. puddle of grease anymore, and I thank you for that. So I anyway, yeah, we got uh, <laughs> glorious bastards and two games for you to play based upon our uh, sage advice. Uh, do we want to go over the Pixar for next? Or should we just leave it for the poll? Just check it on the poll. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. I was Matthew. And I was Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello... Drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>